Hello everyone and welcome back to the Tiny Tropical Garden blog. And this video starts the very first episode of what I'm calling season 3 of my vlog. And weather wise for this vlog, it's been a strange winter. There's been relentless rain, but nighttime temperatures of 12 degrees. It's bonkers. In this video, I'm going to show you how my gardens cope and share with you some of my plans for the coming season. Stay tuned. This crazy warm weather for winter has brought about blooms that you wouldn't expect in January, like these Osteosperm and Whirligig, which interestingly aren't opening with the recurved petals that they did in the summer. The tiny clumps of Aubretia that I've got tucked under the edging logs are still blooming. And of course, the Fatia flowers have performed as expected and now they're holding their berries, which will hopefully form into viable seeds. And the Garia elliptica James Roof, or this tassel tree, that I planted for winter interest is doing its thing, but it's been absolutely swamped by the tree fern and the neighbouring bamboo. So there's some work to be done in this area to keep it looking better for next winter. And there's even flower buds on the plant I use as a windbreak my evergreen cherry laurel. This plant is a great windbreak for me because the glossy leaves look great in a tropical garden, but it's a plant that's tough as old boots and it will protect the rest of the plants from the coastal winds I get in my garden. And some of those plants include this evergreen backdrop to this bed. I planted it this summer because last winter when everything died back it was just bare soil and now I've got great structure from the leaves of this Fatsia polycarpa. I've got four types of facts here in my garden, and I just think they're really great value. They don't cost a lot of money, but they're evergreen, you get year-round structure, and the leaves, especially on this polycarpa, look really exotic. I've also got this variegated griselenia, which is great for coastal locations because it's quite salt tolerant. And finally, my evergreen Magnolia grandiflora, and this is the ferroguinea cultivar, because it's got these lovely coppery underside to the leaves. And once it gets to the right size, it will start blooming in the summer. And it's at this time of year, you really appreciate the value of evergreens in your garden. <laughs> I know I'm not alone in looking back at photos from last summer and wishing my garden still looked that lush and healthy. But these evergreens are really helping me maintain that structure and just that green fullness to my tiny tropical garden. And you really, really appreciate them for this. Go on, comment below if you're also looking back at photos from last summer and just wishing this summer would hurry up and come along. And even though summer is really a long way off, this milder winter weather has meant that there's lots of fresh new growth in the garden like the new leaves on this Erebitria japonica, or loquat tree. As well as lots of fresh new growth on my Melianthus major, or peanut butter bush. Hopefully, this will produce a flower spike in the next couple of weeks, which is about right for this time of year. And I've left all of my succulents outdoors and unprotected, and so far they've not suffered too bad, other than being overwatered by the rain but they're in well-drained soil in this part of the bed, so they should be okay, time will tell. But things aren't all good in the tiny tropical garden. I'm on heavy clay and this amount of rain is not good for clay soil. And the grass is suffering, so we'll need seeding and thickening up again before summer. And my beloved stream has been turned off because of the amount it was evaporating in the summer but that's meant in the winter, as all the water is washed off the beds and off of the lawn into the stream, it's just overcome with nutrients and is full of algae now. So this is gonna need a lot of work in spring. And I've rescued what used to be a stick insect enclosure. And I'm gonna find a way to turn this into a tiny little greenhouse for my garden. It should fit perfectly into a corner. I just need to clean it up and cut some new Perspex windows. I'm big on recycling wherever I can, and I think this little structure will be perfect for overwintering plants and starting seedlings in the spring. And if you watched my tiny tropical garden on tour video, 
where I walked around the Eden Project, I showed you that I was inspired by one of the jungle huts in the rainforest biome. And recently, one of the giant bamboos at work died. So I had to cut down all of these columns and I've bought some home and I'm gonna use them to turn my standard shed into a jungle hut, or at least that's the plan. That will be a summer project I'll share with you guys. And that Fargesia rougher bamboo that was swamping my silk tassel tree, it's just got too big for my garden and it's got to go. I'll be digging this up once the soil dries out. And a lot of you guys comment asking what I'm gonna do with the path. We didn't change it when we started the garden because we don't have the finances to do it. And I'm thinking perhaps we'll stencil it, paint it, or put something over the top of it. I'm not sure yet, but maybe, just maybe, we'll get to that project this summer. And another less exciting, but very much necessary project is giving the fence panels and shed and deck a lick of paint or oil. As you can see, we lost one of the fence panels in the winter storms, so it's a completely different color to the rest of the fences. So that's just a quick run through of some of the projects that need doing in my tiny tropical garden. This year, I'll be looking for more new and exciting exotic and tropical plants that I can try in this small space, and I'll be sharing those with you. Comment below and let me know how your tropical gardens are coping with the winter weather. Hit that subscribe button if you liked the video, and I'll see you all next week. Thank you so much for watching.